And we made it to Nashville. And everybody fired up for that arena right there at Bridgestone where the SEC basketball tournament begins in hours. And somebody who's very happy not to be playing today is the SEC coach of the year, Lamont Paris. And, Coach, it, it's so great to see you. Um, I don't want to beat up on my profession, but uh, they had you last when it all began. They did. Began, they did, that, Paul. And you're the coach of the year. That has to have yeah. some sense of gratification. There is. There's no doubt about it. I would, I'd be lying if I <laughs> uh, said that there wasn't. But, uh, you know, um, it's a, we've got a really good group of guys, and uh, we spent a lot of time vetting them out, looking in there, evaluating guys, and they were a really good fit for what we did. And so I thought we had a chance to be – better than last anyway and I, I think I said early that our aspiration was not to not be last and so uh, it, it, it worked out but uh, what a what a what a fun time of the year this is to be here at the SEC tournament and have a great team and uh, uh, just the recognition amongst our peers is a phenomenal thing and you get a buy you you came within a whisker of, of a double buy uh, which did. is pretty extraordinary when you think about it and, and I, I know coaches don't do it alone. Some some think they do, but they don't. Yeah. Uh, but when you win an award like that, uh, what goes through your mind in terms of the journey and the people around you? Yeah, I mean, I still look at my stat line, and I think I had zero points, zero assists, and zero rebounds this season so far. So, um, you know, it starts with the players first and foremost, that, the, that they're willing to listen and try and play and communicate and all that kind of stuff too. But then your staff and your, your support systems that are around you, uh, it's a, it's a lot of work. Um, there's a lot of stuff behind the scenes that people don't see, and then hopefully when you do enough of that, the product turns out to be really good when you get out there. But I got an incredible staff. Um, they're very loyal. They're very knowledgeable, and most importantly, they know me really well, and so they they know when to step on the gas and when to pump the brake in certain situations. And so that's been really important key to to our success. I've I haven't had a lot of turnover in my staff, and it's just uh, solid people, really solid people to be around. But again, I think it starts with our players and and their ability to listen, process information, and then go out there and play. You take over a program that had dipped, but it, it's, it's a proud program. It wasn't all that long ago we were talking yeah. about South Carolina in the men's final four. We, we yeah. realized women's, it's, it's, it's a foregone conclusion. Yeah, absolutely, every year, right? <laughs> but um, when, you, when you started out, and we, we talked to you th throughout this journey, especially a couple weeks ago after beating Kentucky, uh, do you, do you have something in the back of your mind? Okay, year one, year two, ha ha and how has it gone according yeah. to your, 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 your Yeah, your I map? think you do. I think you have a couple of uh, short-term goals, some long-term things, and then some middle-of-the-road type things too. And I think the short-term stuff really involves the people that you're surrounding yourself with, whether that's your short-term staff decisions, uh, the players and what you want that to look like I I immediately. So. Um, once you achieve those goals, you got some some middle of the road goals too. And as you start checking the boxes on some of those, uh, uh, some of the long term ones, they seem to get a little bit closer. And so we've had the kind of team that's done that. I think the culture is exactly where we want it. That was a big goal for us. But um, there were so many milestones, like uh, having a winning record, right, in the regular in the regular season, having a winning record in conference play. And so once you reach those goals, you know, we had the audacity with two games left to have a goal of trying to win the SEC. If we had beaten <laughs> Tennessee and then gone on the road in Mississippi State, you, you end up first in the SEC. And so it's just been a lot of fun. Uh, I think we're ahead of schedule, obviously, uh, as to what we may have thought early. But uh, now the challenge will be just to be able to continue. There, there's so many different reasons why teams can advance. The portal plays a role. Recruiting plays probably a bigger role. Uh, how has it changed? I mean, you're still a very young coach, but yeah. uh, this is not the same game that it was when you started. Not at all. Season. You know, not at all. I think while I'm still rooted in development, development was the way to get the best players. I mean, you could out-recruit guys, but you could also evaluate and develop guys. And there's so much uh, uh, changing in terms of roster makeup now that it's it's more difficult to, to develop. We're actually redshirting a guy this year. Uh, that's, yep, that's still a thing. Didn't so... Uh, I think development is still a big part of what we're doing, but it's, it's, it certainly has changed. I think identification of the kind of player that that will work for you well, and whether that be not only his uh, makeup as an individual, but what he does on the basketball court. I think those things are uh, probably more important than they ever have been in the game. 
This year, you you had just so many break. I mean, not breakthrough because after the first one, they're, they're, we're not really saying they're breaking. You're breaking through anymore, but you, so many signature wins. Uh, yeah. How does that? Uh, and the season's still got a lot to play out. But yeah. How does that? energize, motivate, and, and, and really light a fire under everything about what you're doing. Yeah, they, they kept stacking. I think you look back to, um, I mean, even one of the first ones, we played in a tournament out in Phoenix, and we beat a really good Grand Canyon team, very talented team. And that represented a championship. We won, we won that tournament. I think that when you're learning and you're growing and you're establishing how to win, that those things are important. So that was one. Uh, obviously, a home game against Kentucky signifies what you're doing when you have a, a, a team that's that talented and ranked. Then to do it on the road against a Tennessee team that's not only highly ranked, but over the past four years, just five years, does not lose in that building. So you do one you do two you do three you look back and then all of a sudden guys expectations change and then now when you go on the road they're expecting to be able to do enough right things to be in games and to win games and i think once you get that kind of growth and they believe like that my job's a lot easier i i, I sit on the sidelines and you know push a button or two but once the team starts to believe and have that type of confidence things just start to snowball Coach, I know the correct answer is we're here to win the SEC tournament. I get that. Yeah. Everybody is, uh, even those who really don't have any chance, which you do. Uh, but with the, with the other tournament, the real tournament, starting next week, how yeah. do you use this week, regardless of when, you, whether you're leaving t town tomorrow night, or, or Sunday afternoon yep. to get ready for next week. Yeah, I think it's a it's a, it's a great. Of course, again, we want to win the SEC tournament. Um, there's a lot that goes with that, but uh, I think it's a it's a good precursor to the NCAA tournament, just in terms of. There's nothing guaranteed other than the game that we play tomorrow at 2.30, right? And you must play well. You must compete well, and you must also make plays in order to advance. And if you do enough of those things and you earn another 40 minutes, then you do it all again. And so I think before going into the NCAA tournament, having a chance to practice that, I think that's, that's, that's incredibly important for a team, again, that's learning a lot of first things as you got so many new faces. You, you, you mentioned the tournament in, in Arizona, which is a, a good simulation, but this is a, a better simulation for next week, although uh, it's different than the regular season when you're playing Tuesday, Wednesday, or or Saturday. Uh, yeah. Do you try to think routine as you're getting ready for tomorrow's game and then maybe the next game and the game after that? Yeah, we try to be as consistent as we can. I think, you know, as part of the reason why we were 11 and 3 this season away from home, I think it's because we really try to replicate our routine, whether we're at home, whether we're on the road, whether it's a tournament uh, environment or whatever it is, and that maybe allows us to, to dive more into what we do. But uh, obviously it's a little different. You have quicker turnaround when you're playing back to back to back in games like this, or even in the NCAA tournament, you may have a day off in between. So that's there's a little bit different to that you have to be a quick study when it comes to scouting report and you know I think it's also why we build our situation in such that most of what we do is us most of what has to do with scouting report and our program is personnel we go over some plays and your team has certain tendencies but the vast majority of it Paul Feinbaum's going to go to his left right when it's all said and done I got the scouting report on <laughs> he's going to go to his left when the play breaks down and so I think that's really important that our guys are aware of that I'm glad you got got the, the dust and the mothballs out of that scouting report. Yeah. That's exactly what I used to do <laughs> when I could move. Coach, congratulations again. I know that will never get old uh, being yeah. SEC Coach of the Year. No questions. Very play. humbling. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate you, Paul. Congratulations. Thank you. And thank you very much. We'll take a short break as we begin. We're live here in Nashville.